In this video, we're going to be discussing one of the special tests that's used in the assessment of thoracic outlet syndrome, and that is the right test, also called the hyperabduction test. To perform the right test, the patient's going to be positioned in seated or standing with their arm by their side. In this case, I'm going to be performing the right test with the patient in the seated position. Now, the PT is going to palpate and monitor the patient's radial pulse throughout the duration of the test. This is a common theme with the special test for thoracic outlet syndrome. So obviously here, the first step is to find the radial pulse. And once you find it, you're going to continue monitoring the strength of that pulse throughout the duration of this test. Once you're accurately assessing the patient's radial pulse, you're going to take the patient passively into two positions. The first position, which we call position one, is where the PT passively moves the patient's upper extremity into 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, 90 degrees of external rotation, with 90 degrees of elbow flexion. So let's see that right here. So we're continuing to monitor the patient's radial pulse, and once we have the patient in this position, we're going to hold it for one minute, looking for signs and symptoms consistent with thoracic outlet syndrome. So we hold in position one for one minute. Once the PT has monitored the patient's radial pulse for one minute in position one, the PT is then gonna passively bring the patient into position two. So to get to position two, the PT is gonna bring the patient's upper extremity into maximum shoulder abduction with now the elbow straight. So let's take a look at that basically lifting the arm as far as possible above the head. And you're gonna hold this position for one minute. Again, assessing for signs and symptoms and monitoring the vigor or strength of the radial pulse. A positive test here can be any of these three things right here. Number one, a complete disappearance of the radial pulse in either position one or position two. Or at the very least, number two, a decrease in the vigor or strength of the radial pulse in either test position. Or finally, number three, reproduction of any familiar upper extremity symptoms. Those could be numbness, they could be tingling, they could be pain, they could be weakness, anything that is familiar to the patient. Additionally, the test position that yields a positive result gives you some clue as to what anatomical structure or space is involved in the compression of nerves and vessels as they exit out towards the upper extremity. For example, if a positive test is found in position one, then that indicates more of the pectoralis minor space as the source of the compression. Whereas if a positive test is found in position two, that implicates more of the costoclavicular space as the source of the compression. Let's take one more look at the right or hyperabduction test. The patient's going to be seated and the PT is going to palpate and monitor the patient's radial pulse, particularly the strength of the pulse, throughout the test. They're then going to position the patient's upper extremity into 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, external rotation, and 90 degrees of elbow flexion while continuing to monitor the strength of the pulse holding that position for one minute, and also monitoring for any signs and symptoms consistent with thoracic outlet syndrome. Then moving into position two, the PT brings the patient's upper extremity into maximum shoulder abduction, now with the elbow straight. Again, holding the position for one minute, monitoring the strength of the radial pulse, and also monitoring for any signs and symptoms consistent with thoracic outlet syndrome. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.